You know, people seldom go to the trouble of scratching the surface of things to find the inner truth. You're here because you know something, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Truth, truth. is stranger than lies. From deep inside the rabbit hole, here's your host, David Weiss. And I'm Patricia Steer, and welcome to TalkNetwork.com. And truth is stranger than lies. David Weiss and I are here with a special guest from London today. He goes by the name of Insanity is Sanity on YouTube. That's the name of his YouTube channel. And I know him as Amir. And this is the first time that David Weiss and Amir have spoke, although they are aware of each other's videos on YouTube. So, David, meet Amir. And, well, um, hi, Amir. How are you doing? Hi, Patricia. Hi, hi, David. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to talk about a couple of things today. We're going to talk about uh, uh, YouTube, your YouTube channel, and what you talk about. One of the main things is the flat earth, which David Weiss and I often talk about here on this show and on our YouTube channels. And we're going to talk about the spirit molecule. Cool. You have a, uh, a web page, which is spiritmolecule.com. So we're going to discuss ayahuasca, something I've not experienced, but uh, both you and David have experienced. So we'll get to that a little bit later in our in our program. But right now, let's talk about a topic that the flat earth world is abuzz about, and that is a YouTuber by the name of Tiger Dan 925, known as Tiger Dan. He's a Bible literalist who has a YouTube channel devoted to Bible prophecy. And then he found out the earth was flat and started doing a series of videos on that. Most uh, mo More recently, he has decided that uh, he's going to recant all of that flat earth stuff. And he's going through a process at the time of this recording anyway, of uh, pretty much denying all the proofs that he said were proofs of the earth being flat. Uh, David, Amir, I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Amir, what's your, what's your opinion on this whole story? Oh, where do I start? Um, I want to say, first of all, I, I really, really liked Tiger Dan. I had a lot of respect for his work. Um, I actually really wanted to get him um, on my own channel and sort of do a little show with him. Um, so when all of this kicked off, I was, I was very shocked. And at first, I just, um, even though it was a bit extreme, I still took his side and I thought, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's just mad. You know, he can't get the maps to work. Um, and I would, you know, I would comment positive on his, uh, make positive comments on his videos. But then I just saw the gradual change and he just exploded into something that I would, did not expect. And I'm, I was saying this to David earlier, I, I was quite, I'm still quite shocked as to what's happening. Um, but I think, um, I think it's quite apparent now what's, what's going on. Um, I don't think it's hard to see. Um, he's, in my opinion, he's had it planned um, from the very beginning. It looks to me. So that's a very interesting uh, take on it, and it surely is a possibility. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know Tiger Dan's videos, he came out with, you know, 25 proofs that rocked his world, showing that it's flat. Um, his evidence, his uh, experiments, his demonstrations were fantastic and really um, discredited the ball and pointed to flat. Um, now that he's flip-flopped, He's come out with zero proofs. He's actually outright lying mm. about what was said, um, you know, flat beliefs or what other flat, you know, other flat earthers have used as proofs. His arguments are all straw man arguments. And uh, literally, they, they absolutely make no sense. You know, if he flipped and came and said, here's why I don't believe the earth is flat and it was good evidence, I'm all for it. But this is absolutely insane what he's doing. I actually have a, a different point of view, you know, um, what that he has um, been a, a plant from the beginning is, uh, is up there in the choices. But to me, it looks like he's been compromised either physically, you know, through blackmail threats, torture in his own words, or possibly spiritually. Um, mm. He has a, a demonic, uh, uh, anti, uh, you know, Satanist uh, spirit in him um, because the entire ball earth concept is a satanic concept to keep us separated from God. Patricia, what do you think? 
Well, I interviewed him on my uh, YouTube channel called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I believe it was back in September. And uh, we had had some pleasant exchanges before that via liking each other's videos. And I, I liked his personality. He seemed very nice. He seemed very genuine. That's why I invited him on my show and interviewed him about his, his backstory. Anyway, in doing the interview, it was very, you know, prior to the interview and the before show chat, he was so genuine and real. I could I could feel it. We did the interview and I just felt when I was done with the with the show, you know, what a what a sweet guy, what a nice guy. So great to have him involved in the flat earth. But uh, recently in going through the video after Tiger came out sort of anti flat earth, I went through my old video interview with him and found a part in the video uh, a little over an hour in where he says something I'm going to paraphrase and David, I, I sent it to you and you've since made a video about it, where he said that if I'm, I'm paraphrasing here that if he ever starts going on videos on YouTube saying that he doesn't believe the earth is flat, that he has been tortured. And now that's what he's saying. So finding that little clip and bringing it out makes me worry. Like you said, David, is he being tortured? Or at that time, is it more like a mirror story? At that time, he knew he was going to be coming out anti-flat earth and just said that torture thing. Amir, what do you, what's your take now with this new information about that statement he made in his September 2014 interview with me? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I, actually, I like the, the points David made as well. Um, I saw that video on David's channel and the first thing that came to my mind was exactly what David and you just explained. Um, and I thought maybe maybe he wasn't in on it from the stop and something happened because it is very strange that the, even the way he said it, like the emotions in his words, the look on his face, um, it, it, that's a, it's, a very, it's a possibility that, yeah, the, he could have been um, got out. You know what? But then the, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, it just goes to show how serious this is and how far they're willing to go to protect the light. That's a, that's one thing I was going to bring up is, you know, I think none of us are um, estimate are, uh, well, I think we're all underestimating um, how what lengths they will go to to keep the secret. Because if we are right and we're pretty sure that we are, you know, that's, I, I think it's even stronger than that, um, they would do stuff that we can't even imagine. What I find interesting about Tiger's videos is he's normally filming himself in those videos, but since he has flipped, we have not seen his face once. So, you know, you could jump to conclusions. Did they beat him? You know, is he is he physically beaten, you know, and doing this? Or spiritually, will you see it in his eyes? You know, when I saw him on Patricia's show, um, you can look into somebody's eyes and hear the inflections in their voice and see the micro expressions on their face. And I, I sense genuine. I mean, he looked genuine, sounded genuine to me. Again, could I be fooled? Very possibly. Yeah, well, we've all been told, fooled yeah, that we live on a ball, so <laughs> we can pretty yeah. much be fooled about everything, it seems. It's a very sad thing, and I don't mean to jump on Tiger Dan in any way. I'm not here to do a Tiger Dan witch hunt, uh, definitely, but it's a big issue, and for those who are not flat earthers, who aren't really following the whole thing on YouTube, well, I encourage you to, to look into it with an open mind, of course, but it is a big deal going on in the YouTube community. It's a big deal because... Uh, this is a person that we kind of grew, even if it's only on YouTube, to care about. And I am fine with anybody deciding that they don't really believe that the earth is flat anymore. But the way in which he's gone about attempting to show us that his beliefs have changed has been in a, um, I don't know how best to describe it. Um, he seems angry, calling people liars, calling uh, calling out other flat earthers in a way that just seems premeditated and that he's lashing out. It's not just that normal way where you would come to your friends and say, hey, you know, my beliefs have changed. You guys, let's look at this even harder. And here's the flaws I found. Let's work together. It was it was more like a, that, I don't know, a bully. That is his style. You know, he, he asked people in his old videos, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Um, he's a very smart guy. His arguments now aren't even arguments. They're the ridiculous, forced, made-up um, statements. Mm -hmm. You know, if you um, and and to me, I think about hypnosis and mind control a lot. You could hypnotize tell somebody and tell them something is real that is completely ridiculous, and they will scan and make scan their minds and make up um, stories and and examples. You know, look, this is why you know 
trees are people, you know, or whatever, whatever the example is, and they will make up stuff no matter how weak it is. They'll do their best, but you know, as the case with the flat earth, it, there's nothing that proves the earth is a ball. There's plenty that proves it's flat. Yeah. Can I just also add quickly to that? Um, I agree about Tiger Dan. The, the one thing that I really respected about him was that he was a, he believed in God and, um, you know, he, he seemed very genuine in, in everything that he was saying. And now he's completely turned his back on everything that he had us believing, even in terms of, you know, in respect of, of the Bible and all of the stuff that he was saying there. He's contradicting a lot of things. He's, he's doing things that a Christian would never do. So all of these things are making me question even more. And also one other thing was that I found quite strange were the articles in the mainstream media. Two of them, or, or two or three, pointed back to Tiger Dan's videos. So, you know, the timing for me in that respect was a bit weird as well. So that's yep. why one of the reasons I, I said I think he, it was a plan from the start, because the timing is just too, too good. And the mainstream um, media coverage. I, uh, I, I lean that way also. Yeah, mm. he hadn't been mentioned in mainstream before. Only when yeah. he kind of went the other way did that happen. Uh, and the article it, itself was not only dealing with Tiger Dan, it was dealing with Flat Earth in general, but he was there and that made it somewhat suspicious. He is now coming yeah. out at the uh, date of this recording, his next video, he's going to be basically debunking all the biblical proofs that he supposedly found before for the Earth being flat. So that's going to be interesting. It's like he's going to be almost going against God and I mean, you know, that's who he is—a Bible literalist. That who he's, who he has presented himself to us as being. So he's going against. It's almost like he's coming out and saying, "My name is not what it is." You know. Mm -hmm. So and the whole thing is yeah. really sad. Yeah, and you know, he, it is. He knows he's doing a ten-part series. He, you know, so who, you know, if you're coming out against something, you make a video. Um, but he knows he's doing a ten-part series, and right now he's at the point where I think he's on video six or or five, and. He, yeah. Not the next video, but the one after. He's going after the Bible, which which is crazy. I mean, why does he go after it now? Why you know this is this really looks like a planned um, attack um, mm -hmm. on on the flat Earth. And he is also uh, in in the comment section. He has sort of buddied up with some known. Um, troll type people trolls for those who don't know the internet world are people whose sole business it is to go from video to video and stir up trouble um, so that's been very odd as well well we're not going to focus on tiger dan uh, for, for you know everyone who is not really interested in this saga but we did need to touch on it we're going to come back and talk with insanity is sanity otherwise known as amir about his youtube channel about flat earth and about ayahuasca as david weiss and i return on truth is stranger than lies on talknetwork.com Thanks for coming back with us. David Weiss and I are here with you on TalkNetwork.com and on Truth is Stranger Than Lies. I'm Patricia Steer. And our special guest goes by the YouTube username Insanity is Sanity. And his name is Amir. He's in London and he just got a new puppy. Figured I'd throw that in. I've seen a picture of the puppy and super cute, super cute. Um, let's talk a little bit about who you are, Amir. You live in London now. Where are you from originally and... How did you get into the flat earth? Okay, well, I'm, yeah, I live in London. I'm 28 currently, just went into 28. Uh, originally, I'm from Iran. I, I saw you had an Iranian guest. Um, is it Mama Ma Ma Queen? Yes, Mama Ma uh, Queen on my YouTube weeks. channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was surprised to see that. That was, that was a really interesting show. So, yeah, I'm from the same country, and I, I've been here in the UK for about 20 years, so... I've been here pretty much most of my life and I got into the flat earth by accident. Um, I was browsing the internet and as you do, I was into conspiracy theories a lot. Um, never anything to do with space though. It wasn't really my, my thing, but YouTube kept insisting on giving me these um, recommendations for the flat earth, which I brushed off. And eventually one day I, I thought, let me just give it a try. And I think it was a video by Eric Dubai. I was pretty convinced. I was convinced pretty quickly. I was like you, Patricia. It didn't take long. But after a while, I found myself sort of almost wanting to 
um, deny it and go back to the ball off. And that's what I did. I think I went back um, for about three months. Um, but then I found Mark Sargent's um, series of clips and that brought me right back in. And here I am about nine months later. I opened up a channel <clears throat> and yeah, and you picked up pretty and, well. And that proves Mark Sargent is a shell. <laughs> <laughs> because Mark Sargent influenced my beginnings into Flat Earth. That was the first thing I saw on YouTube and David. And mine too. So he, he uh, you know, if they're doing a PSYOP, Mark is the king of uh, I mean, sucking people in. <laughs> I mean, Tiger Dan um, probably converted a lot of people too, didn't he? He actually. Look at him now. My, you know, I've been in a pretty much an atheist, no religious beliefs my whole life. Uh, never really believed in uh, the creator. And after seeing Tiger Dan's videos and discovering the flat earth and realizing the design of the world that we live on and that we're not a, just a speck in space, um, he has brought me closer to uh, an understanding of God and his kindness and his um, careful thought in his videos has influenced me to become a little kinder and a little better. So when this happened to him, you know, it does, I mean, he's literally the best actor ever if he's been in it from the beginning or something, you know, spiritually or physically has happened to him. Yeah. MK Ultra well, Mind Control can... too. something like yeah. that could have happened. We didn't even bring that up. Um, go ahead, Amir. No, I was just going to say, I think we should just all pray that uh, if there is anything bad going on that, you know, it, it distances itself from him because it's not fair. I mean, if he did, he did put his life and career or all of that on the line to put that information out if he was genuine. So if anything bad is going on, like, I honestly do pray that it goes away um, because I don't think it's fair if they're doing anything yeah. to him. So. Yeah, so, yeah it's just, almost, it's, it almost feels like we should go to where he is and do an intervention, not to get him to become a flat earther, but just to see if he's okay. I did reach out yeah. via email and he responded back with one line that he's okay. But, you know, what does that mean? Yeah, Is that even him certainly. responding or am I being too much of a conspiracy theorist? To, to wrap up the Tiger Dan segment, hey, Tiger, if you're hearing this, we'd love to see you do a video on camera. Tell us what's going on. Let us see you. And, um, you know... And maybe come up with some, you know, proofs that the earth is a ball. Would love to see them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. We're going to stop talking about Tiger Dan. As anyone <laughs> can tell who's listening, we, we care. We grew to care about We do that. care, yeah. And it comes from that place. The Flat Earth is not a cult. We're not trying to bring our cult member back in or anything like that. It's not that. Uh, anybody who comes up with something valid can go believe whatever they want and tell us about it, too. We're, we want to know the truth. But this doesn't seem to be that. Okay, Amir, you found out the Earth was flat. You already had a YouTube channel going, and that was on uh, the spirit molecule, ayahuasca. Then you sort of transitioned over and kept that channel and then also opened up your new channel, Insanity is Sanity. And boy, that might be one of the best YouTube channel names ever dealing with the subject, <laughs> the flat Earth, Insanity is Sanity, because that's exactly what it is. Everything's backwards. Mm. Um. Yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah, I did. I, I, as I said, I've always been into conspiracies, and to be honest, like most people, I've, I've just been after answers. You know, you just to just to know what's going on and who we are. And before I got into the flat Earth, that that was the path I was on. I was trying to find out who I am, what this world is, what is going on, and that path sort sort of led me to to psychedelics and spirituality and meditation and that sort of thing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how I found out about ayahuasca and psychedelics, which were things that I was completely against prior to that, because I had been completely brainwashed to think they're bad and evil and they could, you know, you could jump out of a window. So when, when I did start looking into it, I was so amazed at, at the power that they hold that I opened up a website um, dedicated to just putting out articles on psychedelics. So and there, there was a PSYOP, um, to the American people and the world that uh, psychedelics would make you jump out of a window. That was, you know, everybody thinks of that, you know, I'm not doing that. I'll jump out a window. Um, that's a psyop very similar in the flat earth. They're trying to make us think that the flat earth is a psyop, you know, it's a psyop within a psyop. It, it's, you know, it's a secret that they want to keep from us. I have a question for you though. Um, I've done, I, I've done four um, ayahuasca ceremonies with a shaman and um, they were all unique, amazing, life-changing experiences. Um, but I have yet to do it 
since I discovered the flat earth. And uh, mm. I'm, I'm kind of excited to do it again because I have questions. And, uh, totally. Yeah. Have you done it since you became aware that we do not live on a spinning ball? Um, I haven't, but it's been something because I'm sure you know ayahuasca and sort of DMT and stuff. It's not something that you can just get up and do anytime you want. Like for me, um, it takes months to recover and even want to go near it. So I've wanted to do it, but it just hasn't. It hasn't happened, so I haven't. No, but I'm really, I'm really intrigued because um, before um, on my first ayahuasca um, experience, I actually saw planets. I actually visited other planets. Um, and I saw myself in different realities. And so I'd love to go and see what that was about and do it now. But no, I haven't. I've heard people that have done it, though. When you saw I other think... planets, did you see spinning balls or did you just appear somewhere on a different plane or a different surface and thought to yourself, this is Mars, for example? Yeah, exactly. No, I didn't see, see spinning balls. It was more of a knowing and an understanding that I was on a different planet. But maybe planet for me was the only word that I could use to define what I'm yeah. seeing. So, you know, that's the only thing I'm going by. So I'd love to go in now and see what it was and go right. in with the question of, uh, is the earth flat? You know, I want to see the plane, see the dome. But no, I haven't. We see what we've experienced, you know. Um, yeah. when, when a baby sees something new, they don't know what it is until they have experiences telling us. You know, on 9-11, one of the subjects I cover heavily um, people saw the building turn to dust in midair, but they only knew collapse. So everybody thinks the buildings mm -hmm. collapsed, but they didn't. So, you know, um, I have lots of, uh, you know, I'm a believer in the endless plane, whether there's, there's a dome or not. Um, if you fly from our thermal pocket to another one, it'll look like you're traveling through space and going to another planet um, if you don't know what you're seeing. Yeah. Totally. totally. And I think I've, that the both things can happen. There can be a dome or structure, whatever you want to call it, over us, as well as different thermal pockets, more land with a dome. I'm kind of that believer. So within the flat yeah. earth, for those who are unaware, there are several different ways to look at it. But the motionlessness, non-spin of earth and the flat of the land, no curve, those are common in all of them. And those are the, the two things that we can we can prove at this point. And many of the other things people are trying to find answers to for those who are unaware i want to help people who are unaware of what ayahuasca is know more about that and i know we have a little bit of time left in this segment and then we'll go to a break and come back we've got about two minutes or so um amir david since you've both experienced it and i haven't talk to us as if we have no clue because kind of i don't about what although i've spoke with you about it before amir and david uh, but not on the air what what is it what does it look like how is it prepared that kind of thing I'm here. here. Shall I take it? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, basically, ayahuasca is a uh, is something. It's a plant that you can get from the Amazon in South America. I think it grows in multiple places, but it's mostly in the South American countries. And the shamans found um, thousands of years ago that they could combine this one plant with another plant and uh, release it. Act it's got an active ingredient called DMT, which stands for dimethyltryptamine, which is an which we, all humans, all mammals, we create them in our own brain, in our pineal gland. So this plant contains the active ingredient DMT, and they figured out a way of releasing this into the body and activating it. And what happens when you drink it is something that's really beyond words. Um, there are no words that I could, I've ever been able to find to even explain 1% of what you experience. So we're very limited to how we can define it, but it's, it's not like a party drug. It's not like something you do and have a laugh. Um, it's quite a traumatic experience because you you go through something called a purge before after you consume it, which is basically throw up, um, and it's not it's not very nice. But so, so Amir, we're coming up to the end of the segment. We're going to continue on this subject. Um, earlier, you said that uh, it takes you months to recover. I just want to clarify that, that it's not like a hangover. It takes you months to no. process the information that has been uh, rewired in your brain and, uh, and to fully realize the, the, the experience. 
Oh, totally. No, no, there's no hangover. I mean, you, you feel like you're on top of the world for, I mean, afterwards. All right. We uh, it's con- not. We'll continue yeah. with this right after the break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Truth is Stranger Than Lies on Top Network. And welcome back to Truth is Stranger Than Lies, the third segment of our four-segment show. David Weiss is here. I'm Patricia Steer, and we're joined by our special guest, Amir, who has a YouTube channel called Insanity is Sanity. We've talked about the Flat Earth. All three of us believe in the Flat Earth. And we're also talking about something that both the gentlemen have done and I have not done, but I would like to experience. And it's a DMT, the spirit molecule, ayahuasca. And uh, at the end of our last segment, I was talking about what's it like? How do you do it? And those sorts of basic questions for those who know nothing about it. It is something that you drink. And Amir and David, it's two different plants that in the Amazon, the uh, the shamans found out many, many, many years ago, you could combine together and form something. And then they brew it up, I guess. And then you drink it. Uh, what does it taste like? I don't know who wants to even tackle this question. Well, Amir, you're our guest. Uh, what in a ceremony when you go to do this ceremony? What is a drink? You have to drink it, and you do this alone or with other people. Just set the scene for us. Okay. Well, no, you don't. You don't do it alone. It's usually done in a ceremony with uh, maybe ten to twenty people, and there is one shaman. Um, And you sort of sit in a circle and then you go up to the shaman, you take your drink. It's a small cup. It's not much, but um, it tastes absolutely vile. It's it's like the worst taste that you could imagine. And it's very hard to get down. But if you manage to get it down, you go sit back in the circle and you just sort of wait for it to start. And the the shaman begins to sing and then they blow out the candle. So it's, it's, it's like a very, I like to say ritualistic. It's like a very dramatic ceremony it's there's dancing there is singing chanting and there's people throwing up in the corner and <laughs> it's a one in, once in a lifetime experience it's, it's amazing it, it's the you're you literally get catapulted into an astral realm whether you believe it or not you do and the shaman goes in there with you and guides you through the process so if you're having an incredibly you know an experience that's overwhelming you can always listen for the the ayahuasca song that they're singing and it'll guide you through i would mm. never do this on my own or even with uh, with friends without a shaman present no never I would not the ayahuasca song is something that the shaman and others there sing, and you hear it while you're under the influence. Yeah, they're singing. They have crazy little chimes that that literally every every um they they have these amazing w- uh, wind chimes, um and every note that hits literally sacred geometry bursts out. In you know my my experience was sacred geometry shapes would just appear in over me, and it was uh, truly amazing. Well, both of you believe in God, and I've heard people who are anti-drugs, anti-ayahuasca, especially who are who are very committed Christians, say this is of the devil. You should never do this, Patricia, because I've spoke with this uh, about this with you before, Amir, and I did get comments saying, "Don't do it, don't do it. You'll let in evil spirits." Um, what What are they? You know, what are their? What do you think about those thoughts? Um, well, to be honest, I think we tend to be afraid of what we don't understand, and Coming from someone that's religious, I mean, I'm not, I'm not religious myself, but I can understand what their thought processes are because they don't understand it. They instantly assume it's something bad. If it's bad, it's to do with the devil. But I think if you look deeper into it, um, I've been doing research into the DMT and the Bible, and I've found references in the Bible that, you know, talk about this stuff um, as something that even Jesus himself might have been under the influence of so to me it's just um it's just people that don't understand what it is and just just come out with the first scary thing that they can label it with um and until you do do your own research and look into it you won't you won't know what it is and amir do you do you put it in a category like um some people just discount um a ouija board but many people say ouija boards let evil spirits in you know because you don't know what's coming in do you look at ayahuasca as you know opening up your pineal gland to accept um to see other realms and yes you could have Mm -hmm. a a a positive influence or a negative influence enter if you're not careful 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's good and bad in everything, everywhere, in daily life. And it's the same with this. If you, if, with, with psychedelics especially, if you're using them, you need to know what you're doing. Because if you misuse them, then yeah, they can have bad consequences. But so can everything else. And that's the way I look at it. Um, because for me, like, for example, DMT has, has had a positive experience on my life in terms of my health. Which I, well, I had a six-year um, smoking habit, which I could not, for the life of me, put aside. Ten minutes into a DMT experience, and I was healed. And I came back, haven't touched a cigarette for three years now. And so for me, it has benefits. And yeah, it can have side effects that are bad, but I, I haven't seen any yet. Because you know, if you treat it with respect and you know what you're doing, you should be, you'd be fine. When you went to do that particular ayahuasca event, did you have in your mind the, the thought that I want to stop, I want to do this with the intention of stopping smoking cigarettes or that just came about naturally afterwards? No, this, um, the smoking thing wasn't on an ayahuasca. Um, it was with DMT. It was the smokable form because basically oh. ayahuasca, you can drink it and the experience lasts about five to six hours. Whereas if you smoke it, it's a very short experience. It's about seven to eight ten minutes long and you then you're back to normal baseline so it's a and the, the thing is the shamans figured out how to, they could take this um smokable form and make it last longer by mixing it with another plant which inhibits the maois and all this so i did it in the smokable form and i didn't go in with the intention of quitting no i actually it was my second time doing it. i didn't even know what i was doing that that well and I went in and I met this female entity who basically came up to me to cut it short and said, you're ill, I'm going to help you. She touched my chest. I came out of the experience five minutes later and I didn't even want to go near a cigarette. It was a very strange experience. There, um, Max Egan tells a, a, a story. You know, he's done ayahuasca many times. And um, he talks about there was a tribe somewhere in Africa where everybody was dying. They were all sick for years. And... Uh, the, the, the tribe was literally dying off. So the, the four wise men, you know, went off um, and did an ayahuasca journey asking, or maybe it was five, I forget the number, asking Mother Ayahuasca for help. You know, what can we do? And then they all came out of the experience and they're like, you know, I really didn't get an answer. I got this. And they were talking about their experience over the next couple of days. And they all realized there was something they all experienced about a frog that they had never seen. And they realized that there was a certain type of frog that they had to find, extract its venom, and then burn holes with hot pokers in people's arms and put this venom into their bodies. Okay? It's never been heard of before. They did this, and the entire tribe got healed, and this strange disease went away. Oh wow! It, that was that the Amazonian frog, the the one with the DMT in it. I don't, I don't, I forget the name of the frog. I don't think it had DMT in it. It was another kind of poison. It was considered oh, a poisonous okay. frog. Because um, I know there's a frog that has DMT, and they they do the same procedure where they take it and they put it into a wound, and basically it's, it's having an ayahuasca ceremony. But it's a frog that makes it. So, I mean, just that story so right there, be. the um, the the connecting with higher realms, um, spiritual realms, tells me, you know, there's something way more than this uh, 3D-based consciousness we live in. Many yeah. people will say, you guys are a bunch of drug addicts, you're talking about drugs, and it's evil, demonic, you're going to let evil spirits in. What are the legalities of using ayahuasca? I mean, you can't go to the local grocery store and buy it, of course. Uh, I know maybe it's different country by country. Amir, you're in uh, London. I, what do they say there? I believe Amir said that you can get it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Did I? Oh, no, no. The oh, no, Amazon. I think you can actually. No, no, you can. <laughs> From the Amazon. <laughs> From the Amazon, yeah. No, but the thing is, um, the legality is, is basically you can buy the plant, but you can't uh, brew it to make ayahuasca. So the plant itself is legal, but you're not allowed to you know, make it. But the legality, I think in most countries, um, in London, in the UK anyway, it's illegal. Um, but there are churches um, where they use ayahuasca as a religious sacrament. They they drink it as part of their religion. So those churches, there is one in the UK. They're allowed to have it. I think in the USA, they won a court battle, David, didn't they? To uh, keep um, the rights for using ayahuasca. I think it was in the States. Um, the maybe, Santa. Not sure. You know? Santa yeah, but I know, No. 
I don't know. <laughs> something like that. I can't remember the exact name, but Santa something. And um, they have rights to use it. But in most countries, um, other than South America, I think it is illegal. It, it's, also, it's also being used for um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, amazing results. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with Amber Lyon? I'm sure you are. I am, yeah. Reset, reset me TV. Yeah, reset.me. Um, yeah. She was, a, for those of you that don't know, she was a uh, CNN reporter, I think. <clears throat> um, and she uh, was kidnapped in Bahrain or something, had literally couldn't work. She was having night terrors, couldn't sleep. You know, her life was a mess, was trying all different things. And then she went to a, a shaman ceremony with ayahuasca and um, it cured her. And she's dedicated her life with her new website to um, exposing the benefits of uh, psychedelics and the human mind. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's changing a lot of lives. Thing. I was just going to say, it's an amazing thing that's been on Earth for as long as there has been Earth, I would imagine. And just the thought that somebody, who knows when, how long ago, took two different plants and had the wisdom to combine them together to create this effect. It's not one plant that does it to you, like like a marijuana leaf, you know, that's going to have an effect and it would be understandable. Somebody could have dried them and smoked them, but this is two plants and putting them together. What are the odds yeah. in the Amazon to find them? Uh, well, have, yeah, are there any they're... stories of how that occurred originally? Yeah, when they're asked, the shamans actually say that the plants taught them how to, which because there's apparently 50,000 different species of plants in every acre, I don't know, but there's a lot, there's millions. And they apparently said that they, the plants teach them what they need to do, which is very amazing. I mean, t- to me, this world is so amazing. There's so many beautiful things that we have no idea about that even exist. And we're forced into this sort of open prison where we're not allowed to touch anything. And I think, I think that's, that's, that's very wrong. I mean, every every man should have the opportunity to 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 experience different states of conscious consciousness, and to really understand what this life is about. And I think that's what they're trying to stop us doing: to really have the power to understand what's going on. And it seems um, that's like this why world is backwards and upside down. It does. They, right is right, right is wrong, and kind of like the the movie and uh, book 1984. Same thing. It's almost yeah. you see something, and when everybody is saying "Don't do that thing," it's almost as if that's what you need to do, with exceptions, of course. There are some yeah. dire exceptions to that, but. Um, yeah, ayahuasca, very interesting. And I said uh, at, at one point when I spoke with you on YouTube, and I've spoke with David as well uh, personally and, and said I want to try it someday. But, you know, it's one of those things. You've got to find mm. the right person to go and the place to go and the time in your life to do it. So eventually I will. Maybe we we'll can all plan and... a trip to South America. That would a be A little flat-off trip to the, to out to the Amazon. <laughs> would definitely unite the community well we'll be back and talk more about this in a bit and uh you're listening to truth is stranger than lies on talknetwork.com Coming back with us, it's Truth is Stranger Than Lies on TalkNetwork.com. I'm Patricia Steer, and David Weiss is here, and we've been talking with our guest, Amir, of the YouTube channel, Insanity is Sanity. He's a flat earther, we're flat earthers, and both David and Amir have experienced ayahuasca, and I have not. And in our last segment, we were talking about purging, and since I've not done it, you mentioned people throwing up Amir in corners, which sounds really thrilling to me. But uh, uh, David, you'd mentioned it's not just purging by throwing up, it's purging from quote both ends unquote and that makes me feel a little bit squeamish about trying it tell me tell us what this is all about so that fear right there is probably the number one thing that stops people from doing it because you know i'm a big baby about that i that's my biggest fear in life you know of purging you know uncontrollably so when I went, I actually did a five day juice fast prior to the ayahuasca ceremony. Um, and that left me, the shaman said that was such a good idea, not for the anti purging, just because the, the medicine has a clean system to go through. And I did not, um, on my first three times, I did not purge at all. On my fourth time, I vomited like crazy. Um, and then, uh, then it was an amazing experience. 
is the area where this happens in, in where, when you go on one of these trips, do they have, I know this sounds really gross, but hey, I'm just going to ask the questions from the audience who's never done it point of view. Are there lots of bathrooms around? I mean, do people wear un, <laughs> Depends undergarments? I'm not joking. I'm serious. Does this happen while you're under the influence of ayahuasca and you can't get to the bathroom? Uh, I mean, how I'll, does this work? I'll tell you mine first and then Amir can tell you his. Um, I went in the United States here and we go to like a yoga retreat studio. So we're in like a very cool room and there's multiple bathrooms. That's one of the key things. So we're in a very clean facility versus other people that go in the Amazon are in a yurt on a mattress. I don't know where they go. They get, I think they have a bucket. Amir? Yeah, I had a bucket. I, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I had a bucket. But the thing is, I didn't purge, um, as you said, from both. <laughs> both ends but i because the thing is what happens is it's not just throwing up when you throw up you can feel this energy leaving your body so it's almost like exactly. you're cleansing out the negative energy right so it could come from anywhere like a lot of people on my second time when i did it i i cried i didn't even throw up i was just crying hysterically and so you can come out from anywhere you could sweat right. um so each person is different Yes, oh, yeah, I had the sweating experience once. It wasn't hot or anything. I was pouring sweat and tears were not even tears, rivers were coming out yeah. of my eyes. And I had this whole heart chakra opening experience. I like to believe the reason I don't throw up is because I'm so pure. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on deluding yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that fasting helps as well. Maybe that's is that why they tell you to fast before? Or? Well, you, you do have to fast so for less... a half a day before. Um, because they want your system pure, but you know, a, a five day or a three day, two day um, juice yeah. fast is always good for your body yeah. and gives you clarity of thought. You know, if no one's ever done a juice fast, um, my mind is so clear during that time and my energy levels are so high. I was like, that's perfect because I'm going to be really using my mind during this uh, ceremony. Oh, well, that's that, interesting. I've never heard of a juice. I've gone vegan, by the way, Patricia. I thought I was going to tell oh, you. Oh, that is. I want to hug you right it's now. It's been that one, so one, one week. Do you eat honey, Amir? Uh, I used to, but no. <sighs> I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm still eating cheese, but I'm slowly taking it out because it is very hard. It yeah, that's the hard. one. It's the queso morphins, which are in yeah. cheese that makes it addictive, like like morphine, actually. So yeah, yeah, that's most. Well, I'd like to try the vegan problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a it's definitely a good thing. I do it from time to time. So uh yeah, this is really a fascinating conversation. Yeah. But many who I mean, are just popping in might think, wait a minute, they're flat earthers and they're into doing drugs. It sounds crazy on the surface, but all of this stuff makes a lot of sense. Amir, what were you going to say? I was just gonna say, like you like you said, there are people thinking, Oh, we're doing drugs. I, I first of all I don't look at it as a drug. It's not a drug to me. It's more of a medicine. And yeah. For me, the experience that I've had from exper experimenting with this stuff has been so positive. Like, I never imagined in a million years I'd become a vegan, but now I understand why I need to become a vegan rather than just wanting to be a vegan. Do you know what I mean? Um, yes. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's positive, and I think people don't understand how yeah. positive it can be. When you say, um, you know, people think that we're doing drugs, um, Almost all of America is doing drugs, pharmaceutical chemicals, you know, made from the petroleum industry um, where they're 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 recreating these. Uh, they're trying to recreate stuff from the Amazon. They find it in the Amazon and then they try to make it synthetically and, and they're killing us. I mean, I don't take any pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, me too. I, I believe that they are good for only an emergency situation, like as if you had a car accident or some traumatic event and that trauma emergency. I think that's where uh, Western medicine excels, that sort of thing. But in your day to day, definitely people need to stay away from that. I think everybody that I meet uh, who's not involved in the kind of words, worlds that we're involved in have at least three to five prescriptions in their medicine cabinet that they are on all of the time that they just continually refill and, you know, be it things for weight loss or, you know, or, or you know, all of the things, mm. their heart or their kidneys, and they're becoming crippled, on, crippled, their body is crippled with these medicines and can't heal itself. It seems like ayahuasca is something that helps you in some way heal yourself mentally. Mm. It does, yeah. And there's been a lot of experiments where they're showing it actually can cure a lot of diseases like cancer, 
um, Alzheimer's. There have been cases of Alzheimer's disease reversing. So it can be used to treat ailments as well. They, and I think that, that could be one reason why they don't want people using it because they can't. They, you know. They've proven that psilocybin and mushrooms, and I believe ayahuasca, actually causes neurogenesis, which is the regrowing and rewiring of brain cells. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, like I said earlier with my website, um, spiritmolecule.com, I, I've, I've got a lot of articles that cover the scientific um, aspects of psychedelics, um, where they're, but they're basically they're proving, like you said, David, psych, um, psilocybin mushrooms alter the brain, um, the brain to fix itself, basically generate new brain cells. It's amazing. It's like it's like the, the best hidden secret next to flat Earth, I think. <laughs> have either of you two done psilocybin i've done mushrooms back in my 20s a couple of times and i found the experience to be amazing it wasn't a ceremonial experience nor was it a partying experience it was just some friends in a remote location in a sort of foresty area and we all did it and then sat around and the mushrooms we ate dry took effect and then we just had this experience together which involved a lot of laughter and walking around in nature i wonder if that did something to me that has a positive effect on the person that i am today well laugh potentially laughter is the best medicine you know they they say that but even if you fake laugh, it re it rewires your body. So if you had a, a laughing experience all the way through, that's a positive thing that changes you. Um, and the answer to your question is yes, I have done mushrooms, and um, I think that they're very healthy um, when taken properly at uh, correct intervals. Hmm. Definitely, we need, a, yeah, we need a pharmacy that dispenses these things. We need these things made illegal and the uh, no, we just drugs. <laughs> we need to grow them. We don't need a pharmacy. Oh, we don't, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I'm just yeah. saying, as opposed to what's in the pharmacies now, which they, are which is killing people. So. They they grow out of cow dung. You know, food, right. food grows out of the ground, out of dirt. I mean, right. the, the world, the, this earth, it gives us everything we need. We don't need government. We don't need pharmacies. You know, we don't need any of that. Right. But yeah. in an ideal world, we would live in a society where there would be a new form of pharmacy. Because we can't all grow everything ourselves, where you'd go to a person who's you know, growing the things that you want, be it psilocybin or carrots, whatever it might be. And that's where you get that. And it's totally legit. You can go buy both at the same time and put it in your cart and wheel away, as opposed to now, which we're putting death in our carts to eat food-wise. And we're putting death in our bodies with the chemicals. The world's upside down. Like I said earlier, everything, it's almost like the thing that they tell you to do, just do the opposite and you'll be fine for the most part. Yeah. Uh, David, um, you have you ever smoked it? I know, Amir, you've spoke of this before, smoking it, uh, DMT. Uh, is that a different experience, a better, worse? Is it better for a newbie, for example? David, Amir, who wants to tackle that? I, I have not um, smoked it, um, but I'm not against it. I just haven't had that opportunity. Amir? Um, I have smoked it, yeah, and I th and I would say that it, it's for a newbie, it would be better start than to just jump into ayahuasca because it could be quite intense. And DMT, smoking it is basically an ayahuasca trip um, shortened to about 10 minutes it's, max. Instead so, of six hours or eight hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'd like to also just add, if anyone um, of your listeners is interested in all of this, they should check out Terrence McKenna. I don't know if any of you guys know oh, about him. Oh, absolutely. He's, uh... Yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah he's amazing <laughs> yep yeah and his work covers a lot of this this like psilocybin and ayahuasca and dmt and he he breaks them down amazingly so anyone interested they should maybe start there and do their research and make their own mind up not listen to the I've... government because like you said patricia everything they say that we shouldn't do i think we should <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have listened to Terrence McKenna videos on YouTube. So somebody who wants to just go to YouTube very easily and type in Terrence McKenna, you can easily find his work and he's reading his writings and they just fill you with a sense of awe when you listen to them and put you in a great place. So uh, yeah. just interesting nonetheless. And I don't find anything demonic or satanic like some people have said about his work, but everyone has the right to their own opinion. And uh, Amir, thank you for being here. Um, SpiritMolecule.com is your website and your YouTube yep. channel is Insanity is Sanity. And David, what were you going to say? We've got about 90 seconds before the end. I was going to let Amir plug what he wants, but I just want to sum up this episode uh, to the new listeners, we are a bunch of anti-establishment drug takers that believe the earth is flat. 
<laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> it's not a mic. It might sound yeah, like I don't want to plug anything. I just want to encourage people to look at things with an open mind, and they will find magic. And yeah, that's that's all I just want to say. Just please do your research on everything, because I think we need to start from afresh. Yes, we do. Definitely a beautiful way to look at it. Open your minds and you'll find magic. So very true. Well, that's Amir and Saturday is Saturday on YouTube. My channel is Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes on YouTube. And David, yours very quickly. It's uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. You can find my YouTube channel is D-I-T-R-H for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Everything's linked up on my website. All right. And this has been Truth is Stranger Than Lies on TalkNetwork.com. Bye. You know, people seldom go to the trouble of scratching the surface of things to find the inner truth. You're here because you know something, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. True. True. It's stranger than lies. From deep inside the rabbit hole, here's your host, David Weiss. And I'm Patricia Steer, and welcome to TalkNetwork.com. And truth is stranger than lies. David Weiss and I are here with a special guest from London today. He goes by the name of Insanity is Sanity on YouTube. That's the name of his YouTube channel. And I know him as Amir. And this is the first time that David Weiss and Amir have spoke, although they are aware of each other's videos on YouTube. So, David, meet Amir. And, well, um, hi, Amir. How are you doing? Hi, Patricia. Hi, hi, David. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to talk about a couple of things today. We're going to talk about uh, uh, YouTube, your YouTube channel and what you talk about. One of the main things is the flat earth, which David Weiss and I often talk about here on this show and on our YouTube channels. And we're going to talk about the spirit molecule. Cool. You have a, uh, a web page, which is spiritmolecule.com. So we're going to discuss ayahuasca, something I've not experienced, but uh, both you and David have experienced. So we'll get to that a little bit later in our in our program. But right now, let's talk about a topic that the flat earth world is a buzz about, and that is a YouTuber by the name of Tiger Dan 925, known as Tiger Dan. He's a Bible literalist who has a YouTube channel devoted to Bible prophecy. And then he found out the earth was flat and started doing a series of videos on that. Most, uh, mo more recently, he has decided that uh, he's going to recant all of that flat earth stuff. And he's going through a process at the time of this recording anyway, of uh, pretty much denying all the proofs that he said were proofs of the earth being flat. Uh, David, Amir, I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Amir, what's your, what's your opinion on this whole story? Oh, where do I start? Um, I want to say, first of all, I I really, really liked Tiger Dan. I had a lot of respect for his work. Um, I actually really wanted to get him um, on my own channel and sort of do a little show with him. Um, so when all of this kicked off, I was, I was very shocked. And at first, I just, um, even though it was a bit extreme, I still took his side and I thought, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's just mad. You know, he can't get the maps to work. Um, and I would, you know, I would comment positive on his, uh, make positive comments on his videos. But then I just saw the gradual change and he just exploded into something that I would, did not expect. And I'm, I was saying this to David earlier, I, I was quite, I'm still quite shocked as to what's happening. Um, but I think, um, I think it's quite apparent now what's, what's going on. Um, I don't think it's hard to see. Um, he's, in my opinion, he's had it planned um, from the very beginning. It looks to me. So that's a very interesting uh, take on it, and it surely is a possibility. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know Tiger Dan's videos, he came out with, you know, 25 proofs that rocked his world, showing that it's flat. Um, his evidence, his uh, experiments, his demonstrations were fantastic and really um, discredited the ball and pointed to flat. Um, now that he's flip flopped, He's come out with zero proofs. He's actually outright lying mm. about what was said, um, you know, flat beliefs or what other flat, no, other flat earthers have used as proofs. His arguments are all straw man arguments. 
And uh, literally, they, they absolutely make no sense. You know, if he flipped and came and said, here's why I to me again, could I be fooled? Very possibly. Yeah, well, we've all been told, fooled yeah, that we totally live on a ball, so <laughs> we can pretty yeah. much be fooled about everything, it seems. It's a very sad thing, and I don't mean to jump on Tiger Dan in any way. I'm not here to do a Tiger Dan witch hunt, uh, definitely, but it's a big issue, and for those who are not flat earthers, who aren't really following the whole thing on YouTube, well, I encourage you to, to look into it with an open mind, of course, but it is a big deal going on in the YouTube community. It's a big deal because... Uh, this is a person that we kind of grew, even if it's only on YouTube, to care about. And I am fine with anybody deciding that they don't really believe that the earth is flat anymore. But the way in which he's gone about attempting to show us that his beliefs have changed has been in a, um, I don't know how best to describe it. Um, he seems angry, calling people liars, calling uh, calling out other flat earthers in a way that just seems premeditated and that he's lashing out. It's not just that normal way where you would come mm. to your friends and say, hey, you know, my beliefs have changed. You guys, let's look at this even harder and here's the flaws I found. Let's work together. It was it was more like a, that, I don't know, a bully. That is his style. You know, he, he asks people in his old videos, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Um, he's a very smart guy. His arguments now aren't even arguments. They're the ridiculous, forced, made-up um, statements. Mm -hmm. You know, if you um, and and to me, I think about hypnosis and mind control a lot. You could hypnotize tell somebody and tell them something is real that is completely ridiculous, and they will scan and make scan their minds and make up um, stories and and examples. You know, look, this is why you know trees are people, you know, or whatever, whatever the example is, and they will make up stuff no matter how weak it is. They'll do their best. But, you know, as the case with the flat earth. And now that's what he's saying. So finding that little clip and bringing it out makes me worry. Like you said, David, is he being tortured? Or at that time, is it more like a mirror story? At that time, he knew he was going to be coming out anti-flat earth and just said that torture thing. Amir, what do you, what's your take now with this new information about that statement he made in his September 2014 interview with me? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I, actually, I like the, the points David made as well. Um, I saw that video on David's channel and the first thing that came to my mind was exactly what David and you just explained. Um, and I thought maybe maybe he wasn't in on it from the stop and something happened because it is very strange that the, even the way he said it, like the emotions in his words, the look on his face, um, it, it, that's a, it's a very, it's a possibility that, yeah, the, he could have been um, got at. You know what? But then, the, okay. sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, it just goes to show how serious this is and how far they're willing to go to protect the light. That's a, that's one thing I was going to bring up is, you know, I think none of us are um, estimate are, well, I think we're all underestimating um, how, what lengths they will go to, to keep the secret. Because if we are right and we're pretty sure that we are, you know, that's, I, I think it's even stronger than that. Um, they would, do stuff that we can't even imagine. What I find interesting about Tiger's videos is he's normally filming himself in those videos, but since he has flipped, we have not seen his face once. So, you know, you could jump to conclusions. Did they beat him? You know, is he is he physically beaten, you know, and doing this? Or spiritually, will you see it in his eyes? You know, when I saw him on Patricia's show, um, you can look into somebody's eyes and hear the inflections in their voice and see the micro expressions on their face. And I, I sense genuine. I mean, he looked genuine, sounded genuine. Don't believe the earth is flat. And it was good evidence. I'm all for it. But this is absolutely insane what he's doing. I actually have a, a different point of view, you know, um, what that he has um, been a, a plant from the beginning is a, uh, is up there in the choices, but to me, it looks like he's been compromised either physically, you know, through blackmail, threats, torture in his own words, or possibly spiritually. Um, mm -hmm. He has a, a demonic, uh, uh, anti, uh, you know, Satanist uh, spirit in him um, because the entire ball earth concept is a satanic concept to keep us separated from God.
Patricia, what do you think? Well, I interviewed him on my uh, YouTube channel called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I believe it was back in September. And uh, we had had some pleasant exchanges before that via liking each other's videos. And I, I liked his personality. He seemed very nice. He seemed very genuine. That's why I invited him on my show and interviewed him about his, his backstory. Anyway, in doing the interview, it was very, you know, prior to the interview and the before show chat, he was so genuine and real. I could I could feel it. We did the interview and I just felt when I was done with the with the show, you know, what a what a sweet guy, what a nice guy. So great to have him involved in the flat earth. But uh, recently in going through the video after Tiger came out sort of anti flat earth, I went through my old video interview with him and found a part in the video uh, a little over an hour in where he says something I'm going to paraphrase and David I, I sent it to you and you've since made a video about it where he said that if I'm, I'm paraphrasing here that if he ever starts going on videos on YouTube saying that he doesn't believe the earth is flat, that he has been tortured. 